What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another entry into our Rogue Rumble series where we take a look at some overlooked or underutilized cards and we try to make some Rogue deck ideas out of them. And so for this one we are going to be looking at Zorart Garchomp. And I know the first thing you guys are probably thinking is, what are you talking about overlooked or underutilized? The Zorark is definitely neither of those things. And while, yes, this is true, Zorark is extremely popular, Garchomp, on the other hand, from Ultra Prism, definitely, uh, you know, maybe not overlooked, but definitely, I think, a little bit underutilized. Hasn't had the most success ever since uh, Ultra Prism came out, unlike what a lot of people may have thought. So we're trying a different approach to the deck. I'm going to call this actually Tord Chomp. We are basically just using the uh, the Tord engine, you know, with the 4-4 four, four Zorark, the three Bridgets, Puzzles of Time, etc. So basically just kind of foregoing Lucario and all of that type of stuff. And you're going to lead the game with Zorark and try to make Garchomp our mid to late game attacker here. So let's see what the deck is all about. Of course, like I mentioned... 4-4 four, four line of Zorark, you know, one of the most dominant cards in the current format, both standard and expanded format, for that riotous beating attack, just for a single DCE, just 20 for every Pokemon you'd have in play, uh, 150 with a choice band, also pretty solid as well, so you can two-shot most everything with Zorark, but also it has this incredible ability, trade once during your turn before you attack, you may discard a card from your hand and draw two cards. So once you get a couple of these guys out and going, you know, you can just really start digging through your deck at an alarming rate. So Zorak's going to be our early to mid-game attacker and just our nice little consistency engine that we have in the deck. But also the other key component, like I mentioned, is going to be Garchomp. So this is the new Garchomp from Ultra Prism. And the reason we're looking at this is for its Royal Blades attack for a fighting energy and two colorist is 100 plus 100 more if you've played Cynthia from your hand during this turn. So that's actually pretty nice with the choice band, you're doing 230, which means you knock out basically everything in the current format. Also only gives up one prize, has free retreat, so definitely some nice things going on for Garchomp here. And we'll actually mention its other attack, Quick Dive, it actually is kind of relevant. Just for a single DCE, just 50 to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Doesn't seem like the greatest attack, but the math with this actually works out really nicely with Zorark GX. So if you do 120 damage with Zorark to a Lele, well guess what, a Quick Dive can actually just pick off that Lele. Uh, similarly, if you do 150 damage to some of the Stage 1 GXs that are in the current format, like Lycanroc, just as an example, or Glaceon, uh, you know, a Quick Dive actually afterwards will just pick them off to be able to clean up a knockout. So Quick Dive can be a decent little backup attack if need be. But we are also playing one of the other Garchomp in this deck as well. And that's going to be for its attack, Turbo Assault, for just a single Fighting Energy to 60 damage. And you attach an Energy card from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. And one thing that's important to note, it says Energy, not Basic Energy. So that means we can actually get double Carlos Energies back out of the deck. We also do play one single copy of Strong Energy as well uh, in this list, so we can get that out as well and in particular Garchomp is here to also help take one hit knockouts on opposing Zorark decks because with a choice ban and strong energy you you can one shot a Zorark GX with one energy so that's actually pretty solid I think we played the Zorark line we play the puzzles so we have all sorts of ways to ensure that we can you know get some of these one ofs like the strong energy like this Garchomp into play uh, whenever we need it so just another little back attacker here and it's important to note we are playing three of the new Gibble from Ultra Prism for its ability Rock Hiding. If it has a Fighting Energy attached to it, it has no retreat cost. So with uh, Garchomp in particular, every energy attachment is really precious. The two energy attack cost is kind of clunky at times, so being able to preserve that energy is definitely going to be uh, important here. So that's why we are choosing this Gibble as opposed to the other ones that we currently have. And just to round out the Pokemon line, two copies of Tapu Lele GX for that Wonder Tag ability. Search out supporters from our deck might let us get a Cynthia to maybe uh, use with our Garchomp or a Bridget, maybe to set up in their early game. And of course, we do have access to Energy Drive as well, since we do play Double Carlos Energy in this deck. So pretty streamlined Pokemon line, not too many crazy techs or anything like that. Just trying to get a bunch of Zora Arcs and Garchomps out. Uh, going on to our supporter count, we have three Bridgets. This is to ensure that we always get the turn one Bridget and get as many of our Zora Arcs set up as quick as possible. And playing a high count of this really isn't even that bad because in a lot of decks, Bridget is a dead card in the late game. But with Zora Arc GX, you can easily just trade away these extra copies of Bridget to draw through your deck a little bit more. So the heavy count really doesn't even hurt you in this type of deck. 
Then for our actual draw supporters, we are playing four copies of Cynthia, shuffle our hand into our deck, draw six cards. Just a great form of shuffle draw. And also, since we are playing Garchomp, we want to max this out, uh, you know, over something like N or Sycamore instead, uh, just because it has synergy with our attacker. And speaking of other draw supporters, we are also still playing three copies of N. Each player shuffles in, draws the equal to the amount of prize cards they have left. You guys are probably plenty familiar with this card by now. I was playing one copy of Mallow, so search your deck for two cards, shuffle your deck, and put those cards on top of your deck in any order. So Mallow in conjunction with Zora Arc GX is just a super, super good combo. We can get whatever we need for the turn, maybe like a rare candy Garchomp, just as an example. We can put them on top of our deck and use trade to draw those exact two cards. So Mallow just makes a ton of sense in decks that play Zora Arc. And the last supporter we are running are just two copies of Guzma, just to choose what we want to take knockouts on, switch your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active, and if you do, you have to switch your active as well. So of course, just to choose what we want to take knockouts on, uh, we can use Puzzles of Time to reuse the, these. I know this does seem like kind of a low count of Guzma. Most decks will play three to four, but the reason we're only playing two is because we are playing one copy of Counter Catcher as well. So you can only play this card if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent. Switch your opponent's bench Pokemon with their active, so this is nice because in the case of Garchomp, sometimes you can't play Cynthia and Guzma in the same turn. So Countercatcher will allow you a way to, you know, refresh your hand and play Cynthia to get that big 100 damage boost, but also still choosing what you want to take a knockout on with Countercatcher. And the one copy really isn't even that bad because we do play the Puzzles of Time as well that we can easily, or I shouldn't say easily, but more easily than most decks, uh, be able to make use of since we have Zorark GX to help draw into the additional copies of Puzzle. Also, we play Mallow in this deck as well, so that's another way we can maybe uh, you know recycle this this counter catcher as well with Puzzles of Time. Also playing one copy of Enhanced Hammer just to discard a special energy from our opponent's Pokemon. Can, this card can sometimes, you know, swing the tempo change of, of a match it kind of in your favor. And like I said, in conjunction with Puzzles of Time, somewhere to counter catcher, we can reuse this at different points if we need to as well. We have two copies of Evo Soda, search your deck for a Pokemon that evolves from one of your Pokemon and put it on them. So this is basically to get out our Zorark GXs as quick as possible. You could try something like Timer Ball here, just because we do play rare candies and you could potentially have more outs to uh, a Garchomp uh, as well. So there is a consideration for Timer Ball, but I'm playing Evo Soda more just to ensure that we get Zorark GX out as quick as possible. Because most times if you get out Zorark GX, then you can usually draw into whatever else you want. So that's why we're playing Evo Soda over the Timer Ball. But like I said, you're welcome to try out Timer Ball as well if that's something you might like. Two copies of Field Blower, of course, to discard our opponent's tool cards and stadiums, getting rid of float stones on our opponent's garbiters to you know ensure that we have our abilities. Also to get rid of things like Parallel City is going to be very good as well. Uh, like I mentioned, four copies of Puzzle of Time. It's one of these cool dual effect cards. If you only play one of them, look at the top three cards of your deck, put them back in any order. So this is actually kind of decent if you're forced to use this just because we do have Zorark GX at our disposal. So Puzzle of Time with Trade can be kind of decent, but the main reason we're playing this is for the second effect. If you play two puzzles at the same time, you get two cards from your discard pile, put them into your hand. So this is nice, we can get back things like Double Colorless Energies, Counter Catcher like I mentioned, Enhanced Hammer, a lot of these one-ofs that we run in this deck. Uh, just, just a nice little solid card, and you know, most decks I think struggle to get two puzzles in their hand at the same time, but thanks to playing things like Mallow and just Zora Arc GX in general, it's not too hard to get two puzzles at the same time. So four copies of Rare Candy, of course, just to skip the middle evolution gap, like go straight into our Garchomps. Uh, this will increase our odds of getting a turn two, or hopefully at the latest turn three Garchomp. Uh, you know, we'd much rather just skip Gabite, go straight into Garchomp if need be. One copy of Rescue Stretcher, just as a nice little form of recovery, we can get a Pokemon from our discard pile back into our hand, or shuffle three Pokemon from our discard pile back into our deck. Pretty straightforward card, you guys are probably familiar with that. For Ultra Ball, pretty standard, choose what we want to uh, you know what Pokemon we want out of the deck and also one copy of Devoured Field so this is a stadium card that came out back in Crimson Invasion but the attacks of your Dark and Dragon Pokemon do 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon and this is actually pretty relevant in a couple of different scenarios so this will increase our Zorark's base damage output without Choice Band to 130 which is actually pretty important because that means we can knock out things like Volcanians we can knock out Greninjas in one hit so 
the Devoured Field actually does help in these situations, and also it's good for Garchomp as well. Even if you don't have a Choice Band, you can still do 210 damage with a Garchomp, which is actually a pretty relevant number to hit for. That's going to make sure you knock out basically all of the Stage 1s uh, that we currently have. Uh, in the format. So Devour Field also can be good to bump your opponent's parallel city since that is an extremely popular stadium at the time of filming as well. And just to round out the rest of trainer cards, we have, have uh, two choice bands just to increase our damage output and one copy of Floatstone just to give ourselves a little bit more mobility allows us to retreat for free. And then to round out the list, we have some energy, of course, for double colors energy. That's going to be the main way we are going to attack. But to power up our Garchomps, we still run some other energy. We run the three basic fighting energy. That's going to be for our Dragon Garchomp. But we also are playing one single copy of strong energy as well. It can only be attached to fighting Pokemon. So that's one thing that is important to note. We cannot attach this to our Dragon Garchomps. But when it is attached to a fighting Pokemon, it provides fighting energy and you do 20 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So like I mentioned before, with a strong energy and a choice ban, your fighting Garchomp can actually one-shot opposing Zor Arc GXs, which is actually pretty important to note. And you know, even though this is a one-of, we can easily get it out of the deck with Mallow, also can reuse it with Puzzles of Time as well, and with Zor Arc GX in conjunction with our other draw supporters. It's not too hard to draw into this card if we need it. But yeah, guys, that is going to be the list we're going to try out. have to admit, though, Garchomp I still don't think is the most... Uh, you know, competitive card just yet. But hey, throwing a 4-4 line of Zoroark uh, GX into most decks typically doesn't make it that bad. So if nothing else, we're going to try to have some fun with this deck. Let's uh, head over to the battle portion of the video and we'll show you how this thing looks in action. All right, guys, so we have ourselves a game here. We're just going to call the coin flip. And we do lose, which, of course, is always not uh, the most fun thing to happen. You know, you always want to try to get set up before your opponent can. But you know what? It's not the end of the world. And here we see our opponent has Tapu Coco Sleeves and a Grass and Lightning deck box. So if I'm just going to go out on a limb and say this is probably Tapu Bulu Vicavolt, that's the safest assumption here. Now, of course, this could be a Tapu Coco deck or something too, but I'm guessing it's going to be Tapu Bulu. And if that's actually the case, and it is, <laughs> um, we might be in some trouble because Tapu Bulu can actually pretty easily one-shot our Zor Arcs. All they need is a Choice Ban, and, uh, you know, then they can... You know, kind of put some work in and one-shot our Zora arcs, whereas we have to two-shot them. So this actually might be a matchup where Garchomp, in particular, might come in some handy. So we'll have to see how this is going to go. But here, opponent's going to get rid of, looks like, a Lightning Energy and a Bridget going for a Vicavolt. Okay, so kind of threatening us with the turn two Vicavolt here. And just a pass. And we do top deck Leos. So that is interesting. So we have some options. We can go for the turn one Bridget, which seems good. Or we could also go for the N, but the only downside to that is if we go for the N, it'll put their Vicavolt back in their deck, and they can potentially just draw right back into that and rare candy for next turn, Where and we might not even draw anything good off of the N, so I'd rather just, instead of trying to disrupt our opponent's setup, I'd rather just kind of expedite our own, that way we can get set up alongside our opponent. And also too, they might be going for the Vicavolt to try to mind game us a little bit. They could be saying, hey, I'm going to go, I might not have a supporter in hand, I'm going to go for this Vicavolt and try to get my opponent to end me, that way I can get a better hand to work with. So that is uh, potentially something they could be going for as well. So I don't really want to play into anything like that, just like I said, want to get set up and just try to beat them uh, that way. Pair opponent has a Skyla, okay. Going for the rare candy as kind of as expected here. And we are gonna see Vicavolt come into play. So that means they will be able to start using that ability Strong Charge, lets them get a Grass and Lightning Energy out of their deck and attach it to their Pokemon any way that they like. So we are of course gonna see this Gibble get knocked out. And I'm actually okay with that. We really don't need Garchomp until maybe like turn three or four. So I'm fine with that thing getting knocked out. We also have access to Counter Catcher now, which actually can be relevant here. So here, gonna evolve into Zorark GX, of course. Gonna use this Evo so that way we can get out another Zorark GX as well. And here, I think we just Counter Catcher and maybe Cynthia. And we could also put down the Floatstone as well. Um, I think we probably just attach to the active, that way we have the flexibility of retreating into something different if we choose to. Alrighty, and not too much to work with in this hand, but we still do have some trades available to us. Uh, we did get double Carlos energy, so we can actually soften up this uh, Vicavolt as well. So here we get down the double Carlos energy. That seems pretty good. 
and here we can trade. I guess we probably get rid of Ultra Ball. That probably seems pretty useless here. Let's see what we get. A bunch of other cards we don't need. <laughs> Excellent. So here we can trade yet again. I think we go for either Choice Band or Ultra Ball. Either of those are fine. And we do get another Zeros. That's good at least. And uh, I guess just beyond that, we just... I really don't want to Ultra Ball anything out of our hand. I'd like to get down a Gibble, but what we can actually do is we can do double puzzle here. And I really want to get Counter Catcher back. I think that could be a potentially big option for this deck. But here we can get Evo Soda to get out in the Zork, or we can actually just get out the Gibble that way as well. I kind of like that play. Since we have the rare candy, we have an Ultra Ball in hand, so we do have the option to at least set up a, uh, a uh, Garchomp on the next turn. So here we're just going to do Ride is beating, softening up this Vicavolt, and even though we're not taking a one-hit knockout, we can just play Counter Catcher again next turn, or Guzma, or if we get Garchomp, we can just use Garchomp's attack for a DCE, if we can find the DCE, to just snipe the Vicavolt to knock it out as well. So we're going to see an energy here, and an energy recycle from our opponent, just getting back the one energy. I think that's a little bit questionable here. I definitely think that's a bit of a misplay. Uh, our opponent's going to strong charge here, and probably just retreat into... Uh, Tapu Bulu. And here, this is actually, again, an example I think where I, my opponent misplayed. Had they strong charged and retreated first, then they could actually use the energy recycler to get back four energy as opposed to just the one. Um, not sure how many recyclers they play. If they're only playing the one, that could be good for us because uh, that potentially might force. We, we could open up some plays where we, uh, you know, force our opponent to burn a lot of energy to retreat and things like that. So we'll have to see what we can make happen. And our opponent whiffs the choice band, which is actually pretty big. They're just going to do 120 to us, so I'm okay with that. So I'm just trying to think, what is our plan of attack for this turn? So we do have Counter Catcher. We can bring up Vicavolt uh, and just take it out that way. Um, you know what? If there's really not a draw supporter we need, we could just go for the Guzma. We have a Floatstone on this Zoroark on the bench. And we do still have some trades at our disposal as well here. So I think we, we trade for sure. I think we get rid of Devoured Field. It's not really a card that makes a big difference here. Like as far as the math goes, we still have to two-shot our uh, opponent's Vicavolts with, um, I'm sorry, uh, Tapu Bulu's with Zorark. We still one-shot them with Garchomp, so Devoured Field, pretty worth this card here. And we do still have another trade at our disposal, so we can trade away. Probably this Tapu Lele seems like a good choice. We can't bench it, but if we are anticipating a knockout from our opponent next turn, we could save it. So I think that's an option. So I think we can get rid of either Lele or Ultra Ball here. So that seems okay to me. Alrighty, so we could play Ultra Ball and get out. Hmm. We could get out a Garchomp. But honestly, there's not a whole lot I really want to discard. I think maybe we could discard the strong energy in Choice Band. I think that's a consideration. But I might want to keep the strong energy just in case we are forced into a turn where we need to pivot to the uh, fighting Garchomp as well. And also, it could be good because if our opponent set up, sets up another Vicavolt, we can actually use that Garchomp to Guzma it up and take a one-hit knockout thanks to the strong energy. So I kind of want to hang on to that. So what we can do here is, I think we can just attach here, take out this Vicavolt, uh, you know, keeping our damage or arc out of harm's way, and then, um, yeah, it seems okay. And we just take a knock here. Another thing we actually probably could have done, we could have guzma up the other Grubbin and evolved into Garchomp and sniped the Vicavolt. That could have been another play we had going on, but we know our opponent doesn't have the Choice Ban. Um, so I think this Zoroark is actually safe for a turn. But I don't know, maybe that would have been a better play going for the Garchomp. That would have mean we would have had to discard a few resources to get it set up and going, but nevertheless. I think, um, you know, I still think we're in okay spot here. So let's see what our opponent is going to do this turn. Going to go for Octillery. That seems like a good Pokemon to get into play at some point, especially towards the late game. Uh, you know, that way you're end proof and stuff like that. Only problem is our opponent can't really make great use of it right now. It lets you draw until you have five cards in your hand, but our opponent already has five. So let's see if they can play down their hand and actually, you know, get some value out of this Octillery. So they do have a Field Blower. Okay. That's a good start for them at the least. And we're going to see a Volkner. Definitely not a card I expect to see. So we're going to see a rare candy. So they are going to be able to get out. It looks like another Vicavolt. So at least we did take one off the board. That is going to at least eliminate the chance of like a double strong charge. Like every turn. 
But here we're going to see an Abyssal Hand. Seems pretty good. They have Energy Recycler. So getting back some energy into their deck. Um, I would imagine that's probably their last one they play. But let's see what they're going to do. They're going to start setting up a second Tackle Goo. So that definitely seems good. Our opponent's definitely in a pretty good spot here. And here they're just going to Nature's Judgment yet again. Um, so cool. Our Zoroark did not get knocked out. And here we actually top deck Garchomp, which is kind of big. And right now, we actually, what I would like to do is actually kind of do that play I talked about where I take out the Vikavolt with the uh, other Garchomp, but the only downside to that is we don't have Guzma, and also our opponent already has some powered up Vikavolt, I'm sorry, some powered up Tapu Bulu, so I don't think that route is going to get us too far right now. So I think we, so let's see, yeah, I definitely think we attach to Gibble and start setting up Garchomp here. Uh, we have the rare candy ready to go. We could debate if we even hold the rare candy Garchomp to, uh, you know, maybe prevent our opponent from going for a Guzma play to take it out. I think that is, I think that has some potential, but it might just be safer uh, going for the, you know, just setting up the Garchomp. Either way, our opponent would have to waste uh, three energy to take it out. So I feel okay about just uh, evolving into it at the same time. And here, what we can do is we can get down Choice Band potentially. So we're going to attach to the Zerua and probably just end here. Alrighty, so nothing too crazy here. Um, nothing too much else to work with. So what, I, I really don't think we can attack this turn. I feel like what we have to do is retreat into a Zerua and just let that get knocked up. Because if we just attack into it, Tapu Bulu has this great GX attack, Tapu, or Tapu Wilderness GX, 150 damage, and it heals all damage from Tapu Bulu. So we just can't afford to attack into this thing unless we're taking a one-hit knockout. So we have to just hope our opponent does not knock out our Garchomp. Otherwise, we're going to be in some trouble here. So here we're going to trade away the end. And okay, it seems pretty good to me here. And like I said, as long as Garchomp doesn't get knocked out, I think we're going to be in fine shape. And they have the Guzma. Oh, but they're going for Zorark. So I'm actually really okay with this. Because we have the DCE, we have the Cynthia ready to go as well. So I feel pretty good about, um, you know, the spot that we're going to be in here. Here, opponent's going to set up, it looks like, yet another Grubbin. So kind of threatening us with yet another Vikavolt. So... Uh, yet again, I think taking out Vikavolt in this matchup at this point is not going to be the best. I think we just need to really concentrate on taking out these Tapu Bulus since our opponent has two fully powered up ones ready to go. Alright, so what we can do is... Yeah, we just promote the Garchomp. Has free retreats. So that's pretty safe here. And nice. We actually top back Field Bar. It's pretty good. That way we don't have to burn the Counter Catcher. So if we can get rid of the Choice Band that way, it can't knock out a fresh Zorark GX. And I think, yeah, we just Cynthia. I think that's probably the play here. Uh, that way Royal Blades can do 200 damage. And we actually have another Gibble, which is really nice as well. Uh, we have Enhanced Hammer, which is actually good because it's a really good trade target as well. So we can just discard that Enhanced Hammer since our opponent more than likely doesn't play any special energies. And okay, so I actually feel pretty good about this. We have a Rescue Stretcher ready to go. We can get out another Zor Arc uh, GX here. So I think we just get it right back from the hand, or right back into our hand. Uh, that way we can keep drawing more and more cards here. So we can bench Gibble. And we do have trade available to us. What do we get rid of? I think either the Ultra Ball or the Fighting Energy. Honestly, I think I might favor Fighting Energy here. I think that might be a little bit better. Um, just because Ultra Ball gives us the option of going for another Garchomp. And we only really need one more Fighting Energy for the rest of the game. But... We're going to go for the uh, Ultra Ball here. I don't know how much of a difference it makes since we have three Zor Arc GXs in play. But I do think that might have been a little bit of a suboptimal play. I think getting rid of the Fighting Energy might have been a little bit better here. Okay, so we're going to take two prizes. Taking out that first blue, And we actually hit another Garchomp off the prizes, which is uh, pretty big. And actually, yeah, I think that was our second one that we had. Or our other one we had prized. So uh, Ultra Ball actually wouldn't have been too good because the Garchomp was prized anyway. So... <laughs> So that wound up kind of working out. Here, opponent's going to take out Zor Arc GX yet again, and I'm completely okay with this just because Garchomp is really the only threat to them because Zor Arc is not a great attacker against Bulu. And here, opponent has Fuel Bar getting rid of Choice Band. I'm fine with that. Like I said, I'm really not too worried about attacking with uh, uh, Zor Arc in this matchup. 
And uh, the only downside to this though is that it kind of sets up our opponent in a position where once they knock out this Garchomp, or I'm sorry, this Zorark, all they have to do is knock out our Garchomp next turn, and that will be the game. So right now that Tapu Lele would be doing, was that 100 damage to us, so if they attach and have a strong charge, we're going to be in some trouble because then they can actually hit for 160. So let's see, this is actually a turn I would love to end our opponent, but we have to play Cynthia Ticket Knockout here, so let's see. Okay, so we can attach, to, okay, so actually what we can do, we can attach to Zoroark, and what we can do is, after we knock out this Baloo, we can just Guzma up Grubbin or Octillery and win the game that way. So I think that's kind of our plan of attack at this point. Oh, and actually, I think we made a little bit of a misplay. I think we probably should have uh, played the Evo Soda and failed it on the on the Gibble. Uh, that way we can kind of thin it out of our deck. We really don't want to see it for the rest of the game. Uh, nevertheless, we did draw into it, so we can just trade it away. But I do think that was another you know, slightly little suboptimal play. Hopefully it does not come back to bite us in this match. And uh, let's see. So we can just do Royal Blazing. And yeah, we only have the one puzzle. We can't play double puzzle this turn. Oh, but we did forget to do our second trade. So that actually... Okay, so yeah, that's actually kind of bad. Okay, but hopefully that does not come back to bite us here. We do still have the two Zora arcs in play, so we can just dig through our deck if our opponent does not knock us out here. But here they have the energy, and all they have to do is strong charge, and they can just win the game that way. So, But here our opponent's going to end. Maybe they had some energy in their hand that they couldn't strong charge. So that actually would be pretty big. Um, but here they have the strong charge. Let's see... So they're going to get the, the Lightning Energy and n no nothing else. Okay, so I don't know if our opponent misplayed or if they are out of Grass Energy, but that is huge for us because now that means this Tapu Lele is actually 10 damage short of taking a knockout here. It's only going to do 140 damage with the energy that it currently has. So that means all we need is Cynthia and we can actually just win the game. Cynthia or Guzma actually at this point. Yeah, so we're just going to get hit with the... The energy drive for 140, and we have Mallow. Uh, not really what we want to see here, because we need a different supporter this turn. Either of the two will be fine. So here we see an N. Okay, so if we hit a Puzzle of Time, Guzma, or Cynthia, we can we can do this. And here we're going to trade away this N. Big two cards here. And yes, we actually do hit the Cynthia, so that's actually huge here. So now we can just play the Cynthia. And uh, the cards we draw, not really that relevant, but now we can use Royal Blades and do 200 damage to knock out this Tapu Lele to narrowly, by the skin of our teeth, uh, win this game against Tapu Lulu GX. So, uh, Zorak, definitely not the best attacker against Tapu Lulu, actually, so really nice that we had something like Garchomp to put in the work to uh, take some big one-hit knockouts for us in that game. Uh, but yeah, guys, normally I would do a couple of other matchups, but at the time of filming, uh, I'm trying to prepare for Charlotte Regionals. I've been trying to test, I think, slightly more competitive decks, so I do apologize about not having more games to show off. But nevertheless, I think it showed off the deck's pr strategy pretty well. And uh, as usual, guys, I hope you did enjoy this one. But feel free to like and subscribe. And if you can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg, or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it'd be greatly appreciated. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you for the next one.